Hello folks, so tonight I am going after the Needle Galaxy. And again, it's an object I captured last year, but I think I can do a better a better job of it this year, and I want to capture at least four and a half or five hours this year and add it on to the data I captured last year, which was about maybe six hours or so. I think that would be enough to, to give me a, a fair chance at some good data. So I, I've already finished capturing my LPRO data, and now I'm on RED. And I'm only going to capture a half hour each of RGB, because I think I've got at least 40 minutes each of RGB last year. And so let's, let's see here what I've got. Um, the mean readout is 794 for RED with 30 second exposures at gain 75 15. So that's not bad because the moon is still over 70%. Um, so I'll, I'll take uh, 794 with the moon that bright. So, and let's see my guiding. Let's clear that out. I've got a dither in there. Now I am already starting to point to the low west. So I'm not expecting my guiding to be great. I think I've got to play with my distance adjustment screw because it doesn't seem like my deck is really obeying all the, the corrections and PhD2 is, is sending it. Even though the 0.66 isn't that bad, look at that. The red is just not coming down. I, I've had problems with the deck lately, so I, I think I'm going to have to work on the mount. Huh. There, it finally corrected over here. Let me take a look at my stars. As long as my stars are round for now, I'm okay. Well, there's the galaxy anyway. This, of course, I would expect the stars to be round in the center. Let's let's go left. Oops, got another. Sub here. All the way to the left, they look round. All the way to the right, that data looks pretty good. Even in the upper corners, lower corner, this data looks pretty good. So, we'll see how it goes. Uh, that's all I got for now. I'm hoping to finish this tonight. I'll see you later. Okay, I am done with the Needle Galaxy. I captured around four and a half hours or so of data this year, and I combined it with around six hours of data from last year. So before I show you all the data, I wanted to show you, in case you didn't see that community post, how Explore Scientific, I can't believe it, they thought highly enough of my galaxy that it, they, they made it the banner of their Facebook page. So how cool is that? You know, I don't get many kudos for for broadband um, because of the severe light pollution I have to deal with. So I never expect to, to see anything like this. So it was really nice that the, the people who design and, and build your telescope um, think highly enough of your stuff that they, they use it as, as their banner. That, that's really cool. So thank you to Explore Scientific. Um, and uh, this was captured... Um, like everything else with my uh, ES-127mm scope. So anyway, let's get back to my uh, data here. Okay, so here is my loom data, and I, I drizzled all the data because um, I, I like to get in closer on galaxies because my scope isn't that big for galaxy season, and drizzling really helps. And so this loom data is a combination of LPRO data from this year and CLS data from last year. Um, I, they're calibrated separately and then I, I integrated them as though they were one filter. So, And this is the original stack data before I, I cropped it. So I just want to show you what that looks like. Um, the, 
the crop, uh, the rotation wasn't that bad. Uh, wasn't that different, but since the galaxy's in the right dead center, I didn't worry about trying to get it exact. I know I was going to get exactly what I wanted anyway, so that is that. And um, let me show you my red data. The data looks so clean when I combine um, this year's data and last year's data as opposed to having data from just one year. It's that much more data just really helps, I guess. So um, this was red, that's green, and this is blue. And this is, um, the scale is 1 to 11. Look how big it is because I drizzled it when I go all the way in. <laughs> that's 1 to 1. It's huge. Yeah, so anyway, let me, uh, let's move on here. This is what my RGB combine looked like. Um, that's not too bad. It actually looked pretty clean. And but I still ran a DBE on it, and uh, the DBE seemed uh, it it kept it left my galaxy alone, which is what I wanted, and I think it did help with the clean up some gradients in the background. So that's what that looked like. And next I did. Well, next I tried uh, the color calibration. I used the photometric color calibration, and that's what it looked like. I don't know why that happens with the background. I I liked what it did with the galaxy color. Um, I like that's that's the color I really wanted for the galaxy after the combine, and, and the, uh, the the color calibration um, really did a good job on that. But I just don't know why it does this to the background. I don't like that that color in the background. And so um, what I did is I kept that and then I did a manual color calibration as well. And uh, the manual color calibration um, up, up here, um, just uh, the, where is that? Uh, the background neutralization and color calibration, uh, that's what I use. And it's still, uh, I still like the galaxy color. It's, it's it's not quite as uh, deep as uh, what I got with uh, the photometric, so I just decided to go with the manual one because I like the background better than the one on the right. So I've I've still never really used anything from the photometric color calibration. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong. I don't know. So that's that. So here's my loom data after I ran um, the DBE on it, and I've already made it nonlinear, and that's how it compared with the I've rotated it to. But you can see uh, that the DBE, um, I think the data on the right looks much better than the original uh, stack. It looks like I got a little ring going on here, but it definitely uh, helped after doing a DBE. And this is my. RGB data after I made it nonlinear, and I also, after it was nonlinear, I ran another um, automatic background ex extraction on it. Well, not another, the other, I, I did a, a DBE the first time when it was linear, and then I ran an ABE after it was nonlinear, and I liked the results. I think it helped the background, as you can see here, without um, really screwing up my galaxy. So the galaxy still is pretty good, and I like the background better. And really, um, I, I, I'm really pleased with how this looked. And I don't, I haven't even gotten to the loom data yet. So that's, uh, this is to me, this is looking really good. So in my opinion, anyway. And now this is uh, what RGB looks like after I add the loom to it. Here, let's put this over here. Now you can see the the galaxy is much much more full. Now I've got some uh, some extra detail going on there, it, it, and, and it's brighter and yeah and thicker. So um, I'm liking that the background a little bit less noisy. Yeah, a little bit. All right. So let's see what have I got next. And this is my sharpen and denoise. And um, after I add Loom, like I said before, then I'm in no man's land. Uh, the, all my standard stuff is done, and I just do 
um, whatever whatever works for me. And this is what it looks like. Eh, it doesn't look that much different, but it is sharpened and denoised on the left now. Can you see any uh, a little extra detail going on there? Yeah. And what's going on here? I think I worked on the color a bit more. Probably just I think I increased the saturation. And uh, let me close that one off here. And the, this is my final version here. I rotated it because I, I don't know why, but I, I, I like this long, the tall version better. Uh, other people might like the other, uh, this one, this one better, uh, landscape versus portrait. But I darkened the background. I tried to be consistent with what I've seen other good images. I'm not saying mine is good, but I, I what I do is um, I search uh, Astrobin for top picks of of the the needle galaxy just to see how dark people make the background and I try to do what they did at least so because I never know how dark I should go on the background and that's what I came up with so what do you think that's my final version um, on the right I like it I, I think it turned out pretty good and it to me it it wasn't that hard to process and can you hear it? it? Here we go again. I, I'm too far along to redo this this part of the video, so I, I'm gonna stop here and come back though after this stupid walk clock um, does its thing. Hey, I am back, and um, I'm trying to compare what I did this year with what I did last year. Now this is on the left, my old needle galaxy compared to the new one. So what do you guys think? Um, hmm. Well, number one, I think the background on the left might be maybe a little too dark. I don't know why I went that dark. Maybe I was trying to hide some flaws. The galaxy itself I thought looks pretty good. Let me zoom in on the new one here. Let's compare the old one. What do you guys think? Did I even make progress? Was this was this exercise futile of redoing the the, the needle galaxy? Hmm. I don't know. Um. I think I will still take the new one. Maybe because I'm just biased towards <laughs> that I reworked on it. I want to make myself feel better that it was a wasn't a wasted effort. But at least on this one, um, I did uh, pick up a, an extra galaxy. I didn't crop it out. You can see this galaxy right here, right there, and um, see there's a galaxy here. And there's another here. It's rotated differently, but you can see only one galaxy there. There should have been another one up here. So at least I picked up another galaxy. Okay, well, let me show you something else here. Um, I redid my Whirlpool Galaxy. This is the one I just made a video on um, maybe a week or so ago. And I, I kept looking at it, and to me, it looked a little too purpley. And so I went back to redo it, and I think I like this color better. It's not as purpley. So that's my recent update of the, the Whirlpool galaxy. Sometimes I make these videos too quickly where I'm like, oh, why did I upload the video? I want I want to make some changes. <laughs> and then here's the, the my M81 galaxy. And I went back to work on this one and I added HA to it and made the spiral arms a little bit different color. I'm not sure which one I like or which one's even more realistic looking. Probably, I mean, I like the colors in this one, but and it, it had seemed to have more likes on Astrobin. Um, uh, these are Astrobin colors, by the way. People on Astrobin tend to go with those kind of colors for the spiral arms. That doesn't mean it's true color, um, but on Astrobin, they seem to favor this kind of stuff. I don't know why, um, but. Uh, this is my original, so I, I I think it's a tie between the two, even though more people like the newer one. 
So anyway, um, I, and one more thing is I did a new sun animation, so you might, you, you'll catch that at the end of this video. I, I really like that one. So well, that's all I got to share, folks, and uh, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.